Good evening, everyone. Am I audible? Yes, sir. Yeah. So, can someone tell me what was the last topic we were dealing with? So, properties of equal potential surface. Properties of equal potential surface. Okay. So, one minute. Recording. Can someone come? Can someone come? Oh, five minutes. Yeah, can someone confirm if I'm audible? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Is my voice clear? Like, I mean, there is yes, no sir. Yes, sir. Something, right? Okay. Recording in progress. progress. I don't know how to leave the whole thing. So can you tell me what was the last property that we saw? Yeah, you were saying that the equipotential surface thing, right? Yes, sir. Yeah. So what did we see in that? The electric field is always normal to the equipotential surface. Yes. So we saw that the electric field is always normal to whom? Normal to the EP potential surface. Why is it so? I gave the reason for this also. What is it? I gave the reason. What is it? Yeah, what is the reason? Because on an equipotential surface, right? If at all you take any external charge Q, 
right? So what do you mean by equipotential surface in the first place? The potential at every point on it is going to be the same, right? So had it had the electric field been parallel to the surface, I, I think I explained this. When you take, let's assume it's not parallel. Let's say it's making an angle theta with respect to the tangential part. Then it can be resolved into two components. What are they? E cos theta and E sin theta. So what will the E cos theta component do? The E cos theta component would have pushed the charge from one point to another, as a result of which the work done by it would have been a non-zero value, right? So work done on it had been a non-zero value, then what should have actually happened? Work done should have been equal to Q into VAB, if I take this point to be A and this point to be B. So this implies VAB would have not been equal to zero. So if VAB is not equal to zero, then it is not an equipotential surface, right? It is not an equipotential surface. Am I right? Makes sense. Guys, can I have some response? So then it will not be an equipotential surface, which is going to contradict the concept of equipotential surface itself. Yes or no? Yes, sir. Yes. So next one, the last point is no to equipotential surface, right? No to equipotential surfaces can intersect. This is the next point. So no equipoten two equipotential surfaces can intersect. This is the last point that is with respect to the properties of electrostatic potential. So please make a note of this. Did you all write? Yeah. So what is the reason for this? Right? What is the reason for this? Any idea? So why do we say that no two equipotential surfaces can intersect each other? Suppose this is one surface, this is another surface. Is if I say they both intersect each other, then what will happen? See, note this equipotential surface one would have had a potential. Now, equipotential surface two would have had a potential. So, if they both intersect at this point, then we are trying to say that this point has two potentials. How is it possible? Right? Am I, am I clear? So if they intersect, then there will be a value, there will be two values of electric pot, uh, potentials at the point of intersection, which is not possible, obviously. So this is the reason why we can say that no two equipotential surfaces can intersect. So please make a note of this point. Here? Yes, sir. Okay. No? Sir? Yeah, tell me, ma. Sir, what if one and two both had same potentials? Then they would have been the same equipotential surface. So that is possible only when one is like this 
and two is like this. Okay. Okay. Yes. Right. So next topic that we are going to see is equipotential surface of various charge systems. So the next topic that we are going to say is equipotential surfaces of various charge systems. Right. The first thing that we are going to see is for a point charge. So try to understand this. If at all I have a point charge, when I say a point charge, unlike the concept of electric fields, I'm not saying whether it is going to be a positive charge or a negative charge. When I say a point charge, it can be either of the charges. The reason being, when you talk about the nature of charge, right? When you talk about the nature of charge, it is uh, going to affect the value of electric field, but it will not affect the value of potential in terms of magnitude, right? So if I take this to be the positive charge, right? What will happen is the direction of electric field would have been in this way. Accepted. So if I take this to be the positive charge, this is how the electric field is going to be, right? But what do I mean by an equipotential surface? Means I need to construct that particular surface, right? I repeat, I need to construct that particular surface where the potential at every point is going to be the same. So from this positive charge, if I take a point P here, which is at a distance R, Similarly, I take another point P here, which is at a distance R, right? I'll take another, the same point P, which is here, which is at the same distance R from that point charge. So when I join all these points, what is the shape that I'm going to get? What shape is it going to take? A circle. Yes. So it would have been a circle had it been in two dimension. But remember, see, this is the point, right? This point can have an effect here that is in the plane of the paper or it could have had an effect out of the plane of the paper also. It could have had an effect, right? So when it had an effect outside the plane of the paper, it will no more be a circle, rather it will get extended to a three-dimensional space which gives you the result as? Sphere. Yes. So what, what you will have is you will have multiple such equipotential surfaces which are going to be set of concentric spheres. So the meaning of it is on these dotted structures, whichever point I take, the potential at every point is going to be the same. That is the meaning. That is the reason why that shape is given a name called as, the shape is given a name called as Equipotential surface. Am I clear with this? Yes, sir. Yes. Right. So I want you all to copy this, please. Shall I proceed? So I want you to make a note. This is going to be the shape for a point charge. When I say point charge, it is for positive and negative charge. Okay. 
Next. Right. So the next question is about how is the equipotential surface going to look for two equal and opposite charges? So if I have a system of two equal and opposite charges like this, if I have a positive charge, if I have a negative charge, then the electric field is going to be in this way. Right. Am I right? Right. So this is how the electric field is going to be. Right. Now, how is the equipotential surface going to look like? So if you see, Around this charge, you would have had an equipotential surface to be like this. Around this, you would have had the equipotential surface to be like this. Right? Like this, if I keep on going, right, then we will have the system of equipotential surface in such a way. Right, we'll have the system of equipotential surface in such a way that this surface and this surface will never touch each other. They will never cross each other. Right, they will never cross each other. And the reason for that is very simple because if you take a system of positive and negative charge, then at the equatorial point, let it not be a dipole, at an equatorial point, what is going to happen is the potential is going to be zero. When the potential is zero, you will not be able to see an equipotential surface itself. Right. Am I clear with this? Yes, sir. Let me show you. Wait. So, if you look at it, I hope you are able to see this. See, this is how the equipotential surface for a positive charge would look like. I mean, uh, for an isolated charge would look like. Similarly, when you talk about the equipotential surface of two equal and opposite point charges, you observe. It is going to look something like this, where the space is completely going to be empty. Why is it so? Because exactly at the center, if you take right, at the center, the equipotential, uh, the potential at any point on that surface is going to be a zero. As a result of which, there will be no equipotential surface existing at all. Am I clear with that? Yes, sir. Very good. Shall we move to the next one? Nice. So listen. Now, how is the equipotential surface going to look for two equal and opposite charges? Right. So if you look at this surface, right? So here you have a positive charge. Here you have a positive charge. Due to this positive charge, you have the equipotential surface. And similarly, due to this positive charge, you have an equipotential surface. What will happen is Due to this positive charge, the equipotential surface will get extended in this direction. I hope you are able to see my... Yes, sir. Yeah. So, it will get extended in this direction. Similarly, due to this positive charge, it will get extended in this direction. So, it will appear as if they will cross each other. But what will happen is, two equipotential surfaces cannot cross each other. What will happen is, they will get merged and they will form this kind of a surface. This is what happens for a system of two like charges. This is what happens for a system of two like charges. 
Am I clear with this? Am I clear with this? Yes, yes sir. sir. Yes, yes, sir. Yeah. So only thing, please respond or else I'll not know. Okay. Next. So the last one is equipotential surfaces for uniform electric field. Uniform electric field means they are going to be set of parallel lines, right? So for the set of parallel lines, the equipotential surface is going to take the shape of a plane, right? And an important point to be noted in everything is, listen, listen to this very carefully. With respect to an equipotential surface, the electric field is always perpendicular at that point. So this is the logic that we are going to use to draw any kind of an equipotential surface for any kind of charge distribution. So if you observe, what I'm trying to conclude is, if you take these rays, right, these rays are the directions of electric field. Electric field will always be perpendicular to the equipotential surface, meaning if you take the radius, right, for, for a circle, how is the radius? The radius is always perpendicular to the circle. Am I right? Because for when you take the radius, right, let me take this color. See, when you take the radius, if you draw a tangent at this point, what will happen? The radial vector is perpendicular to the tangent at that point. Similarly, at this point, similarly, at this point, if you draw a tangent, it is always perpendicular. So that is the logic we are going to use. Means the electric field at every point is always going to be perpendicular to the equipotential surface. That is the first point to be noted, right? Same is the case with respect to this one also. Meaning, if you draw a tangent at any point, the electric field at that point is always perpendicular to it. That is the meaning. Similarly here, it will be perpendicular. Similarly here, it will be perpendicular. So at every point, it is going to be perpendicular. Right? Same is the case here. And most importantly, here you will be able to observe it clearly. Because for the set of parallel rays, right? The rays like this, the planar sheet will be in this way. Right? If the ray is like this, the planar sheet will be in such a way that this is the direction of electric field and this is the equipotential surface. So the reason I'm stressing is it's very, very important for us to understand the next concept. Am I clear with this? Yes, sir. Yes. Very good. Yes. So having said this, let's proceed to the next one. Right. Okay. Before that, see, what are the importance of like, uh, equipotential surfaces? Like the lines of force, the equipotential surface actually help us to have a visual picture of both the direction and magnitude of the electric field and the region. So if you want to understand how electric field in a particular region is, we can use two diagrams. One is either the direction of electric field or the equipotential surface. Both will give us a clear picture of how they are acting. Next is if we draw equipotential surfaces at regular intervals of B, we find that the equipotentials are close, equipotential surfaces are closer in the regions of strong field and farther in the regions of weak field, meaning they are close to each other near the charge. As you move away from the charge, the distance between the equipotential surface is going to change. It is going to increase. Okay, that is what we are trying to say. Read this point carefully. If we draw equipotential surfaces at regular intervals of V, we find that the equipotential surfaces are closer together in the regions of strong field and farther apart in the regions of the weak field. And most important point according to me is this thing. What we are saying, the electric field is always normal to the equipotential surface at every point. I repeat, electric field is always normal to the equipotential surface at every point. Okay. Now, 
this is the most important relation that we are going to see. So the heading is going to be, write down, the relation between, the relation between electric field and equipotential surface. Sorry, a relation between electrostatic potential and electrostatic, sorry, electric field. Now, let us say I consider an equipotential surface like this whose potential is V, means on every point of this equipotential surface, the potential is considered to be V. Now, I consider another equipotential surface closer to this, which I'll call it as V plus dV, All right? So, if I take this to be the source charge, let's say it is capital Q, and let's say I have a test charge Q0, which is moved from a point A to point B. That is, a point A is something that is lying on the equipotential surface 1 with the potential V. And point B is the place where, uh, point B is the equipotential surface for the potential of V plus dV. So, this Q0 is moved from A to B, right? When it is moved from A to B, what is the work done? work done will be equal to Q0 into VAB, meaning Q0 into the potential difference that is existing between the points A and B. So, how much is it going to be? Q0 into, right, one small correction here, here the potential will not be V plus dV, it will be V minus dV. Because as the distance increases from the source charge, the potential will decrease, right. So, Q0 into VAB is going to be final potential minus initial potential. So, V minus dV is the final potential to which the, the charge has been moved. V is the initial potential where the charge was present. Am I right? So, V and V will get cancelled. So, what do you have? You have minus Q0 into dV. So, this is the amount of work done. Let me call this as equation number one. Is everyone clear with this? I'll repeat the steps. What I did is I took two equipotential surfaces, which is generated due to this charge capital Q. And there is a test charge Q0, which is moved from point A to point B. Right, which is moved from point A to point B, where A is present on the equipotential surface of potential V and B is present on the equipotential surface of value V minus dV. So, there is some amount of work done on the charge. We know that work done on the charge is equal to Q0 into the potential difference. So, Q0 into VAB. So, it is going to be minus Q0 into dV. Right? Now, what is the work done by the force? Observe. So, there is an electric field that is generated due to this capital Q. There is an electric field generated due to capital Q. So, what is the force experienced by this Q0? Force experienced will be Q0 into E. So, Q0 into E multiplied with this delta X. So, Q0 into E multiplied with delta X multiplied with the cos of the angle between them. That is, force into displacement into cos of the angle between them is going to give us what? Into cos of? It will give us the work done. So, how much is this work done? Work done will be equal to Q0 into E into, instead of uh, delta X, I will take it as dx. Okay. Q0 into E into dx. I will take it like this. So, let this be equation number 2. Now, tell me, what is going to be the relation between both? So, is 1 not equal to 2 because both are work done? So, minus Q0 into dV will be equal to Q0 into E into dx. So, Q0 and Q0 will get cancelled. E will be equal to 
minus dv divided by dx and this is going to be the relation between electric field and the electrostatic potential okay and this dv by dx is called as electrostatic potential it's called as the sorry uh, it is called as the potential gradient see it's very simple okay in physics or math for uh, okay let's take physics for instance there are two types of rate one is something which is measured with respect to time and the second is something that is measured with respect to distance meaning if the denominator is time had it been dv by dt for instance you will call rate of something something means rate of something that is there in the numerator so here what is there in the numerator v v stands for potential so had it been dv by dt you would have called rate of change of electrostatic potential whereas if something is changing with respect to distance you give a name called as gradient gradient is basically another name for slope so you will call it as gradient of that value which is the numerator so what value is in the numerator it is a potential so you call it as potential gradient am i clear with this so here we call it as potential gradient am i clear with this guys so yes sir what we say is this is how the statement comes Elect electric field is the negative of potential gradient so this is a statement electric field is the negative of potential gradient okay so please make here then i'll tell you what is the significance of the minus write it down write it down So let me know once you are done.
done so listen so here this negative sign has a significance the negative sign indicates negative sign indicates that the electric field is always in the direction of electric field is always in the direction of decreasing potential okay so negative sign indicates that the electric field is always in the direction of decreasing potential meaning if you know the direction of electric field you can find out what is the direction of decreasing potential meaning if electric field is to the right then you can say that va is greater than vb that is the meaning of it that is the reason why you have a negative sign and that is the reason why we say e is equal to minus dv divided by dx and an important point to be noted here is this itself is a very 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 important expression this e is equal to minus dv by dx is a very 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 important expression and we'll be using it at many places in this chapter and in semiconductors also so try to understand this am i clear with this sir can you explain this part again yeah see this one you wrote no negative sign indicates that the electric field is always in the direction of decreasing potential meaning we know the fact that electric field has a direction it electric field has a direction and the direction in which the electric field is present indicates the direction of decreasing potential that is the meaning of it meaning if i take a point a here if i take a point b here if i take point c here if i ask you what is the relation between va eb and vc what you can say is electric field always goes from higher to lower potential so va is greater than vb is greater than vc that is the meaning of the negative sign arni kudyo uh uh vaishnavi could you understand yes sir yes okay so all of you open your textbook go to go and see example 2.3 example 2.3 from your ncert it is in page number 53 of your textbook so if you look at that problem right so i want everybody to focus and mark it as very very important so example 2.3 in page number 53 it's very very important observe so there are two diagrams that are given one is with a positive charge like this and you have a negative charge like this so with the positive charge we are able to see that the electric field lines are like this similarly due to the negative charge it is going to be towards am i clear okay now listen there are two points p and q here and there are two points a and b here right so our job 
is to give the direction sorry give the sign of the potential vp minus vq so we are asked to find what is the value of or uh, what is the sign for vp minus vq and electric field is always in the direction of decreasing potential so electric field is in the direction of decreasing potential so if i take this case number 1 right so the direction of electric field is in this way it is away right from the positive charge so if i take vp and vq and if i do a comparative study which one will be greater than the other so vp is going to be greater than vq right similarly if i take va and vb if you observe this is the direction of electric field if and this is the direction of electric field a is here b is here so electric field always goes from higher to lower potential so which one is higher among both vb is less than vb is vb is greater than va right so what i can conclude is when vp is greater than vq can i say that vp minus vq is positive similarly when vb minus va uh, sorry when va is less than vb can i say vb minus va is also positive simple can i say this yes sir that's it so that's how we find the sign right that simple minus sign has helped us to solve the first step of this problem that is the first part of this problem okay shall i proceed yes sir yeah so give the sign of the potential energy difference of a small negative charge moved between the points q and p and a and b so there is a small negative charge which is moved between the points q and p so this charge is negative it is moved between points q and p we need to give the potential energy difference in this scenario so how to proceed so we know that the potential energy between the points let's say qp is equal to up minus uq am i clear yes sir yes so here what is it going to be q into 1 minute so potential energy 1 minute what is the question give the sign of the potential energy in a difference of a small negative charge moved between the points q and p okay between q and p only you know yeah so one minute i'm sorry okay so the charge is moved from q to p which is going to be uq minus up that is the potential energy difference right it is going to be uq minus up so can i write this as q 
क्यू इंटू वी क्यू माइनस वीपी कैन राइट दिस एस क्यू इंटू वी क्यू माइनस वीपी राइट नाउ हियर व्हाट इज द काइंड ऑफ चार्ज दैट इज बीइंग मूव्ड दिस इज नेगेटिव इनटू वीपी माइनस वी क्यू इज पॉजिटिव देन व्हाट विल वी क्यू माइनस वीपी बी इट विल बी नेगेटिव सो नेगेटिव इनटू नेगेटिव इज गोइंग टू गिव यू पॉजिटिव दैट इज व्हेन यू मूव अ चार्ज व्हेन यू मूव अ नेगेटिव चार्ज फ्रॉम पॉइंट पी टू पॉइंट क्यू इन दिस सिनेरियो द पोटेंशियल एनर्जी डिफरेंस इज गोइंग टू बी पॉजिटिव and logically is it not right because is it not right because when you have a negative charge when that negative charge is being taken towards a positive charge is the positive charge supporting the motion or opposing the motion opposing the motion it is supporting right because negative is attracted towards a positive since that is happening there is another reason where you can say that the potential energy is now the potential energy difference is positive that is another thing that is another way of stating am i clear with this yes sir okay make a note of this okay they ask between a and b also no Uh, you tell me between a b u a b is equal to u a minus u b am i right so can I write as q into v a minus v b q negative v a minus v b minus v a is positive then what about v a minus v b that is negative so negative into negative is again going to give you Possible. Am I clear with this? right so third point what did they ask what is the third point that they have asked give the sign of the work done by the field in moving a small positive charge from q to p so here they asked about the work done by the field when charge is moved from q to p so observe this is the direction of electric field and and p is here q is here i want everybody to answer this when you move from q to p this is the direction of displacement and what kind of a charge is moved positive charge is moved so there is a positive charge what will be the direction in which it will experience force due to the field itself correct so qv will be in this direction moved from q to p right so can i say work done by the field is directly proportional to the angle between force and displacement so force is to the right displacement is to the left so what is going to be the value of angle theta will be 180 degrees so when theta is 180 then what is going to be the work done is it going to be positive negative or zero so work done will be negative that's it so work done by the field in this scenario is going to be negative sir can you repeat see simple ra if i place this positive charge right i i have questions you answer this 
the positive charge will experience a force due to the electric field in which direction remember positive charge will always experience force in the direction of electric field so q e is the force experienced by it clear with that nice. and read the question carefully the positive charge is moved from where to where from q to p so the direction of motion of the charge is opposite to the direction of the force so force is in this direction displacement is in this direction so the angle between them is 180 degrees when the angle between them is 180 work done by the force is going to be negative Eight. yes because work done is force into displacement to cos 180 cos 180 is minus that's the reason okay yeah so fourth one give the sign of the work done see here whenever they ask a question about work done right they are very particular they they are saying sign of the work done they are not asking uh, give me the sign of the work done they are saying give me the sign of the work done by a particular force so work done by an external agency in moving a small negative charge from b to a so when you move a small negative charge from b to a my system is a little slow yeah when you move the negative charge from b to a what is going to be the work done by whom not the work done by the electric field work done by the external agency so if you are able to calculate the sign of the work done by the force work done by the field itself then work done by external agency will be exactly opposite so here there is this is the direction of displacement and here you have a negative source charge so due to the negative source charge this is the direction of electric field now tell me what is going to be the force experienced by this negative charge due to the electric field will it be in the direction of electric field or in the direction of opposite to electric direction opposite to electric opposite to electric field so this is going to be the value of qe and this qe is going to be electric force this is the direction of electric force then what will be the direction of external force opposite direction this is the direction of external force so external force and displacement in this scenario are in which direction same direction yes external force and displacement are in same direction so what can you conclude from this work done will be work done by the external agency will be positive that's it that's it that's the idea okay and the last part of the question is does the kinetic energy of a small negative charge increase or decrease when it is moved from q to a see obviously when it is moved from q to a it is moved in the direction opposite to the external force opposite to the electric force see logically think of this no you have a negative charge here i am using blue color see you have a negative charge here negative charge is moved from b to a right so you are moving the negative charge against the electric field when you are moving it against the electric field what will happen to its energy obviously it should decrease obviously it should decrease why because you are doing something against the nature against the natural motion you are creating an opposing motion as a result of it the kinetic energy will decrease is the point clear yes sir yes so here what i want you to do is this is a very 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 important problem okay this has helped us to solve Uh, one concept of e is equal to minus dv by dr 
error is what we have used to solve all these problems, right? So it is very important to note that uh, how to solve this problem and how to use this concept. I hope the things have got registered in your mind. I'm assuming that it is clear. Right? So based on this, we will see the next set of concepts in the next class. Yeah. So that's it from my side for today. There are no questions we can wind up. Shall we? Okay, sir. Yeah. Can leave. Thank you. Sir. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Sir. Thank you. Yeah.